If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I was actually very much looking forward to New Mutants coming out. All of the pushbacks, the rumors of reshoots, all of the actual whitewashing. Uh, I knew this movie was going to be a mess because it had a mess of a production. And despite a merger and now a global pandemic and a bunch of movie theaters being closed, we actually got to see this movie. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Swell Entertainment and I, like I said, was looking forward to seeing New Mutants. I am not familiar with the comics really at all. I was never a big fan of X-Men comic books to begin with until I was older. And I honestly am not familiar with the New Mutants or any of the mutants that are in New Mutants. But lately my opinion on something that's an adaptation, even if it's a comic book adaptation or a book adaptation, at least for me from a review standpoint, I feel like that's better though, because then for me, I don't have any emotional attachment to any of these characters, so I can just judge the film and the performances and the characters based on how they're presented in the film itself. First and foremost, this video is going to have spoilers. I'm gonna to touch on a lot of issues with this movie, but mainly what I wanted to do for this video was go through a bunch of the questions that I still have. Probably could watch this and still be lost when you're watching the movie because I'm probably gonna go out of order because that's just what I do. Fairly certain I touch on a couple major plot points, but there's not a lot of major plot points to begin with in this movie. My overall basic review of this movie, it's not as horrible as I was expecting. It's watchable, but it's definitely not a good movie. The plot is very basic and thin. They don't flesh out a majority of the characters, so I don't care about most of them. I would say the main cast is fairly small for an ensemble movie like this, if you want to call it that. And I've seen most of them in other things. I know most of them can act. But God, some of them were doing a very poor job. Was it watchable? Yes. Would I pay money to go see it again? No. The plot was just not great, but it left me with a lot of questions, uh, specifically about some of the powers and all of that. Um, but before we talk about that, let's talk about uh, the elephant in the room, which was the whitewashing. <laughs> the main one that I looked into was the casting of a light skin actor to play Roberto, who in the comics is actually dark skin. And apparently Boone was actually asked about this and he specifically said that he didn't care about the racial tensions happening in Brazil. Zaga, the actor who did play uh, Roberto, and I'm not knocking this actor at all. His performance wasn't great in the movie, but they gave him nothing to do. Frankly, you could have taken Roberto out of the movie and very little would change. I believe Boone's quote was, if Zaga didn't exist, then maybe he would have found a dark skin actor to play Roberto, but that's not what happened. He found Zaga. Adaptations are often box office bait. Um, a lot of times they tank, but there is money there. That's why they keep getting made. The thing that Hollywood seems to miss though is that first and foremost, you want to at least appease a good chunk of fans. At least the fans for the actual thing that you were adapting are gonna turn up. So to actively whitewash a dark skin character when there's already so few dark skin characters in comics is incredibly dumb. And it's so unnecessary to do in fucking 2020. Now, obviously this movie was a mess. So they did all the casting and production started, I believe in 2017, but still, there's not really an excuse. I mean, the, even one of the creators of the comics criticized was the fact that Blue Hunt's character, Danielle Moonstar, didn't have braids in the movie, but she does in the comics. Not that this would make it better, but I figured like, okay, maybe in the original, original version of the comics, she had braids. And then since then her character has been drawn without the braids. But I checked and pretty much every iteration in the comics of Danielle Moonstar has had braids. Why not keep the braids? And also I believe in the credits, they misspelt his name. Three years, you couldn't get that right, really? I'm gonna move forward, but I just wanna say like casting a light skin actor for a dark skin character is a bad hill to die on. But I have questions about some of the characters. I have questions about some of the powers. I have questions about plot elements, if we can call them that. Um, so I'm just gonna run through some of those. If anyone's wondering, yes, I'm still using this. In 2018, when it was first announced that they were gonna be pushing back the release date for the movie and they were gonna be doing reshoots to add not only more horror elements, but a whole nother new character. I don't remember if they ever said what that character was or who they were going to add. Those reshoots never ended up happening because the Fox Disney merger started and they really couldn't touch this movie for like a year and a half, which added to the delays. Um, but who do you think the character would have been? One of my main criticisms for this movie hands down, they needed a clearer villain because there really wasn't a clear threat 
for most of the movie, it was kind of all over the place. Um, we had Rhea as being shady, but she wasn't much of a villain until, like, the end. And then when she was the villain, she was, like, a really bad villain. Like, cartoon villain, which for a comic book movie is saying something. Danny's not really the villain. The demon bears, like, a threat and, like, oh my god, here's this thing that's attacking us. I don't think it's meant to be, like, an intelligent threat. I believe it's Essex Corp that Reyes works for, but, like... Even there, like, not even a real threat. Like, I'm not scared of text on a screen. The opening of the movie is Danny being woken up by her father and then running from the tornado slash monster that is terrorizing their tribe. I felt it was very clear at the beginning what it was because we get a voiceover from Danny talking about how a story that her father would tell her about how everyone has two bears when they're born, one that feeds off fear and one that's like good. This is like the demon bear that's like hunting her and it's a manifestation of her fear, which is why it's so big because she's scared of everything. I'm still not understanding the size in relation to like her. And it's like, she's not afraid of a lot, it seems. She's also 16, like what the hell happened in her life that this bear is so big if this is a manifestation of her fear? The catalyst for Danny going to join the other mutants at the hospital where the treatment facility where she's at is this bear terrorizing and killing apparently her whole tribe. But the bear is a manifestation, I believe, of Danny's own fear. And it essentially comes about when she's asleep, like she really has no real control over it unless she like focuses on it because there's a whole other thing later, but we'll get to that. But what was it that triggered Danny's fear and her fear demon bear to the point that it killed her whole tribe. We never find out what it was because it clearly must have been something. Was it just a bad dream? In the end of the movie, when she believes she's going to die because Reyes is going to kill her, like nothing, no matter what any of you do, Danny has to die. She's too big of a threat. We have to kill Danny. She believes she's going to die and that triggers the bear to come and like save her, but also terrorize all of them because it's trying to get to Danny because it's attacking her own fear because she's scared she's going to die. Well, she's scared she was gonna die in the opening and that's why I attacked everyone. I'm very confused about the backstory of what brought the demon bear to Danny's tribe in the first place. What are the rules of Ileana's powers? She can teleport using limbo, okay? But she can't leave the hospital. She can't leave the grounds. Can she not use limbo to just teleport herself to the nearest town that's 20 miles away? Or does she physically need to know where she is? Can she only go small distances? If that's the case, then why can't she just stand on one side of the force field and then go through limbo? go to the other side of the force field. If she doesn't want to leave the hospital, that's fine. But there's no evidence that shows that she doesn't want to leave the hospital. It just shows that she's like used to the fact that she's there. It's like, it's a cage. Okay, I get it. But like, can she really not leave? Also, I know there are cameras everywhere, including in solitary confinement because we see Reyes physically monitoring her and Danny when they're both in solitary confinement. And then also in their rooms, there's cameras. But considering the reaction that Ileana had to being in solitary confinement either time really, could she have just gone and like kicked it in limbo for a little bit? so that she's at least not in solitary like that. Like she's in her own solitary, yes, but it's like in a place where she's comfortable in limbo. Could she have done that or did she just not do it? At what point would they have been deemed ready to move up in the program? And by move up in the program, I'm assuming moving to the hospital and like being experimented on. I believe that's the vibe they were going for. It's like, oh, they're gonna make us into killers. That's what they want. Um, Ileana was pretty much there already. Yes, she had issues with authority, but like, she clearly liked killing, had very little issues with doing it. Was it just that she had issues with authority? Also, what about the others? Like, at what point was it for them to be ready? Because they mostly weren't fucking around with their abilities. Aside from Sam strapping himself in and like cannonballing around, there really was no training of their powers. And then any actual use of their powers was punished. So what was the goal of them being there besides the group therapy sessions? Because it really was not to get a handle on their powers. Was it just to fuck with them psychologically? break them a little bit and then send them off. If there was a goal that they were working towards, they did not make that clear. Maybe I just missed something in the interpretation of the uh, urban legend or the story that Danny tells us that her father told her, but she's like, oh, there are two bears, like the fear bear, the demon bear, and then the good bear, I believe. Is Danny the good bear? Is that what that was? Or was the demon bear always also the good bear? And then that was like the demon bear becoming the good bear at the end. Also, side note, why did the CGI get worse? I know they couldn't touch the CGI for like a year and a half, but like I saw this movie to drive in, so it wasn't exactly the sharpest of image, but I'd say the demon bear looked pretty cool, at least in the fight scenes with Ileana. So then to see the probably the most important part, which is Danny like talking the bear down, the bear just looked really poorly done. Like I saw an outline around Danny. I know I already complained about this, but whose idea was it to not have a clear villain? I just feel like you need a clear threat to deal with, especially when you're trying to bring a group of people together. You need a clear evil to defeat, and there was not a clear evil here. And even when Reyes was the clear evil, like, okay, we need to stop Reyes, 
She was a terrible villain. The quickest way to fix this movie, in my opinion, would be to have a clear villain, or at least a clear threat the entire time. Like, make the bear a bigger threat constantly. Like, it keeps getting inside the barrier, so they need to keep Rey as alive because she's the only one who can put the barrier up. So she's more of like a necessity to them. Like, hey, we can't just get rid of her right now. We need to keep her around because she's keeping us safe because the bear is hunting them, or hunting Danny specifically. Um, but yeah, the bear just, I don't know, needs to be a more consistent threat, I would say, for me to actually be like, oh my god, it's a demon bear. Oh, my next note, the dumbest scene ever, which is the scene when Reyes is gonna put Danny down because she has been given word from the higher-ups that Danny's powers are too dangerous and too uncontrollable. So you just have to kill her. Also, the way they executed her getting that information was really dumb. I'm not scared of text on a screen. And then the moment that Reyes like looks a little like, oh, I have to kill someone, and then immediately punches them the code when she's asked for it. Oh, now I think you're spineless because you don't have any real agency. You're just answering to a higher power. Reyes brings Danny into a back room, straps her to a thing, and she's under the impression like, oh, we're gonna do another treatment to try and unlock more memories. I know the plan was just trying to get more information from Reyes, but like, I don't know, there was just red flags after red flag like the Danny should have been panicked way earlier in my opinion but I'm not judging Danny here I'm judging Reyes because she was the worst villain ever in this scene oh my god she's trying to put Danny under to do a lethal injection but as Danny is going under Reyes is monologuing about how her dog went feral and obviously in this situation Danny is the dog so uh Danny's now feral and how they had to put the dog down and there was no other option um also in this scene Reyes does the slowest unzipping of a body bag in clear view of Danny. Like, oh my God, that was so dumb. Like do that earlier, put it somewhere else. What are you doing? Especially as you're putting this girl to sleep and then you're giving her the injection and you now have confirmation that as she's going to sleep or as she's asleep, she manifests fears. Let's put her in the scariest situation possible while also giving her the ability to fight back. And then obviously that's not what happens. There's no manifestation of powers or fear here in this moment. Um, Rain comes in and saves her, but it was just so fucking dumb. And also just a missed opportunity. Backtracking a bit, to when Reyes was first testing Danny and like trying to do hypnosis or making her think about like her abilities to try and unlock more memories of everything. Danny sees a memory of a hospital where they're testing on kids and testing on mutants. Whose memory was she seeing? Because it's probably not hers. Fairly certain that what she's seeing is a memory from Reyes, but was that tied to Reyes's fear? Because we see later when Ileana is trying to kill Danny, she sees one of Ileana's memories where she sees the smile man and pulls out the smiley man and she's able to turn her face into the smile man, which that would have been cooler to see more of. Why didn't we get more of that? Like that was Danny physically weaponizing Ileana's fear, which does work against Ileana, but then everything else is very subconscious. She has no control over anything, let alone the demon bear itself until she wakes up. They just made her powers really all over the place. But that memory of the hospital had to be tied most likely to Reyes's fear but we never actually see Reyes' fear. Obviously we need Danny to see the hospital because then there's no other point to justify them questioning why they're there. Like, oh, we're not gonna join the X-Men. I think that's where we go. I think we're gonna be killers, blah, 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 blah. Like we need that scene. I feel like that needed to be more anchored into potentially Reyes' fear or for that to have manifested differently than what actually happened, which was pretty much nothing. In the pool scene where Ileana is swimming and then Roberto joins her and then they're like making out, Roberto gets all stressed out because apparently Roberto when he was holding his girlfriend, his powers manifested and he just like burned her alive. Yikes. I understand why that would cause performance anxiety, but Ileana tells him like, you can't hurt me, but you do have to catch me again. And then she disappears because she was never actually there. I'm fairly certain that was part of his fear manifesting because it was just something to lure him to the pool to be out of that room, to like do the whole uh, fear hunting him thing. Because we see every other time that Ileana teleports using Limbo, there is a blue flash of her magic surrounding her teleporting. We never see that in the movie and in the dark in the pool where there's no other real light, he also would have seen that. So I'm fairly certain that Ileana was never actually in the pool because we see her on the cameras in her room drawing. And then also when he does confront her, like you were in the pool with me, you left, what did you do? She genuinely seems confused. I'm fairly certain it was never Ileana and it was all his fear. But fear Ileana says, you can't hurt me. Is that talking about Ileana? Did, can she heal? Can she not feel pain? Would she survive being burnt up by an actual sunspot or is that another hint that that fear Ileana is not real because you can't hurt me because 
she's not real. I know I'm nitpicking with all of these questions, but I feel like if it even two or three of them were answered, it would be a better movie. This is another question about Danny's powers. I'm fairly certain we only get legitimate confirmation from this from Roberto because everyone else experiences their fears far away from everyone else. And then the only thing we get of it actually being true is when Rain runs out and she actually has the witch's brand on her neck from when the priest attacked her. Reyes tells Roberto that no one else was in the pool but Roberto. Their fears are corporeal, but no one else can see them. It's just them experiencing their own fears. They're being hunted by their own fears. But then with the smile men, not only is it not only Ileana seeing it, Sam sees it, but they seem to develop their own goals of hunting down everyone else. Because the moment that Ileana takes off to limbo, they go after Sam and one of them goes and finds Roberto and then finds the others. So is that just a non-consistent like, hey, we're just gonna throw all the rules for Danny's powers out the window? Or is it because she physically took on the role of the smiley man by putting on the face to scare Ileana to save her own life when Ileana is gonna kill her in limbo? Or is it just because she genuinely thought she was going to die and so that fear manifested itself into something actually corporeal that all of them could see? Also, I expected way more of the smile man. They were just like two seconds. I was bored. Rain attacks Reyes and saves Danny. Reyes runs out, bloody, totally fucked up. Anyway, she drops something, a pendant, something. It had a stone or something in it that was the same color as the orange of her force field. When she dropped that, I was like, oh, this must be important because you know, they zoom in on it. First I thought, oh, she's not actually a mutant. She doesn't actually have power. She can't do those force fields on her own. This pendant, this totem, whatever it is, she uses to give her the abilities to like create these force fields. I don't know. And then it's never brought up again. She can still do the force fields. She gets eaten by a demon bear. That thing is never brought up. Obviously now there's not gonna be another movie so it's not gonna come up again. But what was that? What was the point of that? Once the bear is like attacking everything, Ileana goes full badass. Uh, Lockheed, suddenly an actual baby dragon, which makes sense. I just would have expected more considering Limbo was a place that her and Lockheed went so often that it became real because of their magic. So it makes sense that Lockheed would become an actual baby dragon, but I would have liked to have seen more of baby dragon Lockheed. But my main point of that fight scene is that they're pretty much fighting in between Limbo and the real world. And we know that Ileana, at least sort of, can bring someone else into limbo because she brought Danny to limbo because she wasn't a killer in limbo. Could she have just brought the bear to limbo and left it there? I know she uses limbo to get around, so like she'd always have to deal with the bear, but limbo looked like a pretty big fucking place. I mean, you could have left it there till daytime and then fought the shadow bear in the daytime. That would have been cool. I already talked about this, but they really did like very little with Roberto. Like very, very little. Like you could have taken Roberto out of this movie and it would have made next to no difference. They had him like washing dishes the entire time. Apparently in the comics, he gets his powers partially from the sun. That would have been cool to see. At least like him even outside for more than two seconds. Like that would have been a cool scene. They did really nothing with Roberto. You guys can really answer any of the questions I posed. If you actually know, like you saw more of the movie or I missed something, feel free to let me know if I missed something. But I do have something I wanna ask you. There is no end credit scene for this movie, nor did I expect there to be one. Disney, Marvel is trying to distance themselves from the Fox movies because they wanna be able to reboot the X-Men in the next couple of years, which they're definitely going to do because money. So there was never gonna be an end credit scene hinting at something more because there's not going to be anything more. This is it. But if you were going to add an end credit scene to New Mutants, anything at all, what would it be? Overall, even for a bad movie viewing experience, it's not worth it. It's not a guilty pleasure movie, I would say. It's just boring. Even with the reshoots they had planned that they couldn't do, I don't know how they would have salvaged this plot, but that's my opinion. What are yours? Did you like New Mutants? Did you see New Mutants? Are you familiar with the New Mutant comics? Are you Looking forward to Disney Marvel rebooting the X-Men. Who's your dream casting for an X-Men character? I don't know, I'm just making up these questions as I go along. But let me know, comment down below. <laughs> but that's gonna be it. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. If you want a far more structured review of this movie and the production fails and all of that, then absolutely check out my episode of the Mike, Mike and Oscar podcast. We talked all about this movie. We also fixed it 
sort of. Thank you, Alan, Elise, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, David, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Exo, Feckless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lee, Lisa, Logan, Manga, Matt, Matthew, S, Meme Lord, Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Prilock, Rob, Robert, Rob, Sam, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry.